Hello, it's Chem Games here once again, and in this video we're going to continue with the character shop or selection menu system. So yeah, let's get started. First, we want to go to the blueprints, and we actually want to create a new folder. Let's call it Okay, let's open it and let's create a new struct structure. Let's call this character data struct. Okay, let's open it. And we have this uh, one row here, here already. So let's rename these two mesh and let's change the variable type to skeletal mesh from here and object reference okay let's add another variable this let's rename this to unlocked let's change this to boolean let's add yet another let's rename this to the price and let's change the type to integer let's save let's close okay and if you have used the same uh, mesh back and I this one you should have here on the models and pre-made characters you should have four different meshes here so what we want to do next we want to double check that all these meshes are using the same skeleton okay let's check that from the skeleton find a skeleton it will go to the SCK casual 01 mannequin character mesh okay let's go back to the pre-made characters let's check the mesh 01 using the same and yes, everything are all the same, at least for now. Yes. So everything should work correctly already. So what we want to do next is we want to go to the blueprints folder. And we want to go to the save game and we want to open the save game endless. And we want to add a new variable. Let's call this characters info. And let's change the type to the character data struct that we just created. Now let's change this to an array. Let's compile. Let's save. And let's add four new elements here. One, two, three, four. So from index zero to three. Let's open the first one. Let's select uh, our mesh PC zero, zero. Or actually, what mesh are we using on the game? Let's actually move this to here and let's play. Let's see. Okay, we are using the one with the T-shirt. So. Let's go back to the save, uh, save game endless, and let's change the first one to the one with the t-shirt. So the mesh PC01. Okay, let's make it unlocked like that. Okay, index one should be uh, PC00 and unlocked not. And let's make the price, for example, 50. The index two, let's make it the mesh PC02. And unlock not and price 100, index 3, PC 0, 3, and price like 250 or something like that. You can obviously use whatever values that you want, but just make sure that the first one is unlocked and it's the mesh that you're using. And the other ones are not 
unlocked as default. Okay, now we can compile, we can save, and we can close this. Next, we want to go to the character, sorry, to the HUD folder and to the character selection uh, widget. Let's open it. Let's actually move it next to the third person map like this. And what we want to do here now is we actually want to copy this back button and let's rename it to, for example, um, let's call it left button and let's duplicate it. Uh, actually, let's not duplicate it yet. Let's anchor it to the middle. Let's set the size X to 60, size Y to 60. Alignment, let's set it minus three on X and 0.5 on Y. Then let's uh, reset the position X and position Y. Okay, actually, oh, sorry. Let's make this uh, sorry, positive four, like that. Okay, now let's click on the text and let's change this to maybe this. Okay, we will later on adjust all these and make this all look a lot better when we add some like uh, texture back with some widget uh, HUD things. But for now, this will work. Okay, now we can duplicate the Actually, let's change this text to left text. Now let's duplicate the left button. Rename it to right button. Also this text, let's rename it to the right text. Now let's set this alignment to minus three on X zero position and zero, uh, position X and position Y zero. Now let's change this text to the arrow that's pointing the other way, like that. Okay, let's actually check that they are in the middle. Let's put the game characters and they are, okay. But they yet doesn't do anything. So the next thing, what we want to do is uh, let's click on this button for uh, first uh, left button. Let's scroll down. Let's add a on clicked event. Let's go back to the designer. Let's click on the other button. Let's add on clicked event also. And let's move this a little bit further down. And so what we want to do next, let's move this even further. And here on the left, on clicked left button. What we want to do is we want to get the game mode reference and we want to get the, oh, actually we have to set it first. So let's, or create it first. So let's compile, save and go to the third person map. Let's open the game mode blueprint. So the GM endless runner. And to here, we want to create a new variable called character index. Let's change the type to integer. Okay, let's compile and save. Let's go back to the character selection. Now from the game mode ref, we can get the character index. And we want to minus one from it. Okay, now we want to check if it's less than zero. So basically, so we don't go to the uh, negative numbers and let's actually align this okay and uh, uh, if it is under zero then what we want to do we want to get the game mode ref and we want to set character index and the value that we want to set it to is uh, we actually have to create a little macro. Let's call this macro character info last index. And here, what we want to do 
is we want to get the save game ref. We want to get the character info. We want to get the length of it. And we want to minus one from it because it starts from one and we want it to start from zero. So let's minus one from it. Let's align out all this. Let's get the output. Let's add a output and let's call it last index. Let's change the type to integer. Compile save and let's connect it there. Actually, let's compile and save again. Now we can close this. But here, now we want to just get the character info last index. And we want to connect that to the character index. So what this does is when the character index goes under zero, it will set it to the, uh, the highest index that we have. So this way we don't have to update the amount of the available characters every time that we add a new character. So this will automatically do it. Okay. So what we want to do next is if it's uh, not less than zero, so it's still over. What we want to do then is we want to get the game mode ref and we want to get the character index and we want to uh, minus minus so decrement integer. Let's connect this to the false. Let's actually move it to here. Let's move this to closer. And yeah. Next, we want to create a new function. Let's call it get get character uh, data. Okay, and we don't have to do anything here yet. So let's go back to the event graph. Now, what we want to do is we want to get this get character data and connect it from the true and also from the false, like this. Okay. And next thing, let's go to the unclicked right button. Let's move this even further down. And here, what we have to do, this is a little bit different. We have to get the game mode ref again. We want to get the character index, of course. And we want to add one to it. So plus one. Now we want to check if it's greater than the character info last index. So it doesn't go over the amount that we have of the amount of the characters that we have. I mean, now let's add a branch again from the on clicked right button. Let's add, connect this to the condition. Let's actually, yeah, let's not do anything uh, else. Or I will actually align this better. I like everything to be aligned nicely. So like that. And from the true, what we want to do is actually let's first do the false. So let's get the game mode ref. Let's get character index. Let's plus plus increment integer. And connect to the false. Now from the game mode ref, let's set character index. And let's set it to zero. So if we go over the last index, so for example, if we, our last index is three and we try to go to the four, it will set it back to zero like this. And after that, what we want to do, we want to get the get character data uh, function and we want to connect it to the boat, uh, true and false like that. Okay, let's actually move this a bit further down and this a little bit further up. Let's compile, save, and yeah. Next thing, what we want to do, we want to open this get character data. Here, what we want to do is 
first we want to get the save game ref and we want to get the character info we want to get that and we want to get from it get a reference or actually do I want to get a yeah it doesn't matter then we want to get the game mode ref under here and we want to get the uh, you know character index of course and let's connect it to the index so now we're trying to get the info of the uh, character that we like need the info I don't know how to explain but yeah let's split this and then what we want to do is oh we actually have to first we want to go back to the event graph and to the uh, event construct what we want to do here is we want to get player character we want to cast to third person character and after that we want to just promote it to a variable and let's rename that to player ref like that let's compile save and go back to the get character get character data okay and here on get character data hello what did i say but yeah let's continue let's move this a little bit further down and now we want to get the player ref and we want to get the mesh from it and after that we want to set scalable mesh asset like this from here we want to get the mesh and connect it to here okay now let's compile save and let's actually try so characters let's change this yeah it works but now we don't have the option to uh, unlock the character if it's not unlocked yet nor we have to select it or anything like that we will do it on the next episode and if your character is doing the base t pose right now then you just have to check that uh, all your characters if you are using like different uh, packs of characters that they are all using the same skeleton even though if like they are all using uh, Unreal Engine 4 skeleton they have to use the exact same skeleton for example if some of them are using the skeleton that comes with the third person template it will not work with the other UE4 skeleton even though they are the same but you will have to assign them to the exact same one so for example here on the models uh, on the pre-made characters you have to check that you can do it like if you know that they use the same skeleton but it is not uh, the same on the project you want to select all the models you want to right click skeleton assign skeleton and you want to select the same skeleton that everything else is using in this case it is the this one on the path game SK casual 01 mannequin character mesh so yeah that will fix your problem but yeah I think that was all for this video if you like what you saw please click the like button and subscribe for more and yeah hope you have a great day and see you in the next one bye